Hi there, and thanks for joining me for this lunchtime row. Now, of course, you don't have to be doing this over lunchtime, just any time where you have around about 25 minutes spare and you want to put in a good amount of rowing, then this could be the workout for you. Now, as for today's row, what we're going to do is a four minute warm up and then 20 minutes as a kind of pyramid, all right? So we're going to start 20 strokes a minute, then 24, 28, 24, 20. And we're going to do that four times and we're all done. A really simple row that's gonna take you up and down through the intensities. And if I was to give this any kind of an intensity rating out of five, I'd probably give it three out of five. Because there are moments where you're gonna be working quite hard, but there's also plenty of time to back off the pace and let your body recover. All right, so let's get into our four minute warm up to start, but we have to set up our machine first. So set your resistance on your machine to somewhere where you know you're gonna get a good connection and feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against. It. And again, you don't want to be rowing through air either. Not too easy, not too hard, right in the middle. And that's where you're going to leave it for today's workout. As an indicator on this, I've set my resistance to seven. Now, next up, go to your foot straps and I want you to set them to a height where you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably, okay? So if you're set too high, it can get a little bit difficult. Set too low, then it can get quite uncomfortable, all right? So a good guide is that the strap goes over the balls of your feet or the bottom lace of your shoe, and then you can experiment from there. Okay, so this warm up, we are gonna start at 20 strokes a minute at a nice gentle pace, okay? So I describe this as though you were just standing up from a squat. I don't want you to put in too much power because this is about getting our body moving first before we then start actually thinking about power, okay? So follow me for stroke rate and I'll guide you through this whole warm up, okay? Here we go then in three, two, one, and we're off. So 20 strokes a minute is just one stroke every three seconds. So you can keep an eye on your timer and that will help you with your stroke rate. And like I said, power wise, just enough of a push that you know you're connecting to the stroke, but you're not working hard. We'll increase the pace after the first minute. So don't worry about feeling this is too easy. This is just about opening up your body, getting that feel of your hips, rocking forwards into the front of the stroke and then rocking backwards at the back of the stroke. Okay, so really just use this first minute to open up your hips and just start to get your blood moving and you might feel your breathing increases a little bit, but you won't be working too hard for this first minute. So we'll take three more strokes at this intensity. And then after this one, I just want you to push a tiny bit harder. Okay, so this is when you start to feel all right, I'm putting in a little bit of power into the machine, but you're still not working hard. You'll feel your heart rate coming up and breathing rate coming up a little bit, but you should still be able to talk, okay? You should still be comfortable. You'll just know that you're putting in some kind of effort. If you were to give this uh, kind of effort intensity out of 10, just run about five out of 10, okay? It's kind of like if you were just walking up a consistent flight of stairs where you start to get out of breath, but you're not about to lie down on the floor because <laughs> you're working so hard. And this is kind of the pace I want you to row at in today's main session when I say, let's go to 20 strokes a minute, okay? So remember whatever pace you're rowing at right now, because that's going to be useful. Right, one more stroke. Take one foot out of the straps, put it on the ground, continue rowing. I know it seems a bit daft, <laughs> but it does help, especially with that hip opening. Okay, so you keep the rest of your stroke the same. You just have one foot on the ground and it really does help with the flexibility of the leg that's still strapped in as you come forwards, if you've got one foot on the ground. Trust me, it does. One more here and we're going to swap feet. Don't worry if it takes you a few seconds to get in and out here. If you miss one or two strokes, that's perfectly fine. Continue rowing. Think about that rock forwards. Holding that forwards tilt as you push with your legs and then rocking backwards again. Don't worry, I'll talk a little bit more about technique when we get into the main row. Don't worry, I'm not just going to talk technique, but I'll certainly bring up some good practices. Okay, both feet back in, strap yourself in. Now legs straight and roll with your back and arms. 
So you swing over your hips first, then pull in your arms, and then you release your arms and rock forwards again. And you'll notice I've just, I'm banging on about this hip rock forwards and backwards the whole time. It's because it's so important on the rowing stroke that you think about your hip rock as well as your arms. One more here. And let's roll into the front of the machine with a forwards tilt, arms straight, and just push out with your legs. Okay, so keep those arms straight. Try to keep that forwards tilt, okay? Inevitably, you'll rock back a little bit, but push out with your legs. This is about connecting that power from your legs to the handle and really getting a feel for pushing without pulling your arms, okay? Let's take two more strokes here. I might just nudge over four minutes. Ooh, always finish with a flourish. <laughs> right, so have a quick drink. Make sure and keep moving up and down the rail to keep your muscles pumping. And I'll describe one more time what we're doing today and then we'll kick in to our lunchtime row. Okay then, so today's session is a really simple one. It's gonna be a stroke rate pyramid where you spend one minute at 20 strokes a minute, then up to 24, 28, then down to 24 and back to 20 strokes a minute, which means you get two minutes worth of 20 strokes a minute to recover, lovely, okay? Now, of course, as you go up and down, your pace will change, right? But I'll keep you right with that as we get into the main row, because there's no point me talking to you sitting here when we're not rowing, because I've got lots to say when we are rowing, all right? So make sure and have one last quick drink before you get started, if you haven't already, then get yourself strapped in and ready to go. Remember to set your resistance to where you had it before. Hopefully you haven't altered anything. Ah, and we are ready to go, okay? Hopefully you are too. Let's go in five, four, three, two, one. And we're off. Now remember, this is just the 20 strokes a minute. Little lead in we're doing first. So one minute at 20 strokes a minute at your pace that you were rowing at in the second minute of the warm-up. That makes sense, doesn't it? Around about five out of 10 effort. Ah, just enough to make sure that your heart rate and breathing starts to increase, that you know you're working, but you're not working too hard. And this will be important as this 20 minute workout goes on because you'll start to use these 20 strokes a minute as more as a recovery rather than a part of the row, okay? Maybe not the first couple of pyramids, but towards the end, you might find you're looking forward to these 20 strokes a minute. <laughs> so we're gonna go up to 24 in a few strokes time, and you're just gonna do that by pushing a little harder with the legs, okay? So one more stroke here, and here we go. So push a tiny bit harder with the legs to increase your stroke rate to 24 strokes a minute. And what's gonna be happening now is you're taking one stroke every two and a half seconds. So just make sure you hit every five and every zero on your counter. And what should have happened is just because you're pushing a little bit harder with your legs, you should be going a little bit faster. Okay, so not only are you going faster because you're taking more strokes per minute, but literally that extra shove from your legs means more power is going into the machine too. Okay, going up to 28 in a few strokes time. So same again, push a little harder with your legs. One more stroke here. You ready? Let's go. So push a tiny bit harder. Take yourself up to 28. And what you should find is your drive speed when you push harder with your legs. That goes up. But some people find the recovery side of higher rates a little bit trickier. And you control that with your handle. So try to avoid holding the handle against your body at the back of the stroke. I don't want you to throw it away from you as though you're scared of it. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you. But I want you to smoothly bring it in and back out again. And we're almost done in the 28s. One more. 
and let's ease back to 24. So just slightly less power from the legs, a slightly slower drive speed, and a slightly slower recovery. This should feel, compared to the 28 strokes a minute sections, a lot more controlled. Sometimes 28 can feel quite rushed. Whereas, well, for me anyway, I love 24 strokes a minute. I feel this is the rhythm my body was designed <laughs> to row at. I mean, I love all stroke rates equally. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> but if I had to pick a favorite, <laughs> Okay, two more strokes, and then we're going to ease to 20 again. So, 20 strokes a minute, one every three seconds, and keep an eye on your split, and return to that 20 strokes a minute pace. And we're going to hang around here for a total of two minutes. Just let your heart rate recover, your breathing recover, ready to go up and down the pyramid again. Now do you see why I said this is only a three out of five workout? I mean the 28s, sure they feel tough, but the 24s aren't too tough. And then with these 20 strokes a minute, it's almost easy. But I should downgrade it to one star. <laughs> but like everything in rowing, you get out of it what you put into it, okay? If you work hard, you'll see the benefits. If you try and hide from the work, well, you'll still get a workout. No one's gonna rob you of a, a workout, but if you're looking for fitness improvements, or speed improvements. You kind of need to put in the work, okay? You can't hide from it, especially on a, when you're doing it this way, watching a video. I'm not standing next to you shouting at you, <laughs> telling you to go faster. Okay, less of my motivational chat. <laughs> right, so we're getting into our next increase. So two more strokes, and we'll get back up to 24. You ready? Here we go. So push a little harder with the legs. Take that stroke rate up, slightly faster drive speed. And remember, it's all about rhythm. I've said that a few times. It's about making sure your body is flowing through all the angles. So. It really does help to think about your body positions and letting that power flow through your body. And that forwards tilt into the front with straight arms is really so important here because that's where you accelerate the power into your machine and where your fluid rhythm starts. Okay, four more strokes. And then we're up to 28. One more. You ready? Let's go faster. So push faster with the legs for a faster drive speed. And then fluid, smooth rhythm. Return the handle away from you. Let that handle away be what triggers your return to the front of the machine again. Okay, so handle away first. Then you rock over your hips so that your knees just need to bend in order for you to roll to the front of the machine again. If you find you're tugging on foot straps, then you don't get your sequencing in the right order. Okay, two more strokes. One more. 
and let's ease off again to that lovely 24 hours. See, the other stroke racers are just going to get jealous now, aren't they? It's like I've got <laughs> a photo next to my desk of a giant 24 because I love it so much. All the other stroke rates are like, why don't you like us? <laughs> oh, right, sorry, I was too busy making a joke. I think I lost rhythm there. <laughs> I have to apologize. This is, if you've never done one of my videos before, trust me, this is a professional version of me. <laughs> Usually I'm distracted and talking about music or food by now. <laughs> right, three more strokes. One more, and back down to 20 strokes a minute to that warm-up recovery pace. And we're here for two minutes. Now, if you're wearing a heart, mo heart rate monitor, then chances are, if you're keeping an eye on it, you'll see that there's been a drift upwards in your heart rate. That even though you've been rowing through the same paces and that you're back down at the same pace now, you might find your heart rate's a little bit higher than it was last time. And that's just a sign of your body working harder, okay? And it's to be expected in a row like this where you're increasing your intensity. I mean, there's so many different ways you can program a workout. And I really do hope to create a whole variety of different workouts for you, whether they're the lunchtime rows or set plans on here. But what you'll find is variety keeps things interesting. Okay, so if you just sat down and just did 30 minute low intensity rows, sure, there's fitness benefits, but it gets crushingly dull after a while. And actually, your body starts to adapt to doing the same thing over and over again. So it's not really the best way to train. So variety keeps rowing spicy okay keeps it interesting right three more strokes then we're gonna go back up to 24 again one more here we go then up to 24 push harder with the legs keep those arms straight let that power flow from your legs up through your core your posterior chain into your straight arms and then let your hands be conduits for that power into the handle. Okay, so you're like hanging off the handle as that power flows into the machine. And you let your legs take care of the majority of the power for most of the stroke and only halfway through the stroke do you finally swing your back and pull in your arms all right two more strokes one more and we're up to 28 so get that drive speed quicker with more power and get the handle away to recover slightly quicker okay should almost be a one-to-one -one ratio when you get up into the higher rates of drive to recovery. So try and find a rhythm. You're dancing with the machine at this stage, okay? Pick a song at 28 beats per minute. Oh no, hang on. That'll be really slow. What's 428s? Uh, 108, still a bit slow. 120, 136, oh there we go. That'll get you dancing. <laughs> That'll be a good old, get on a good old dead mouse track. Roll to that rhythm. Okay, two more. One more. 
back down to 24. So ease off the power, adjust the rhythm of drive to recovery. Ideally, what you're looking for is to give yourself the longest recovery possible. Okay, so you want a fast drive and a slower recovery. If you ever kind of look down at yourself and watch yourself rowing, video yourself, or even look in the reflection of your screen and see you're taking twice as long over the drive than the recovery, you're doing it the wrong way around. Okay, three more. One more. Okay, back down to 20 strokes a minute. Really ease off that pace. Back down to your warm up. And this is where that rhythm, the ratio I was talking about is perfectly explained. So if you look at the timer on your monitor, what you're looking for is to drive for one second and recover for two seconds when you're down at 20 strokes a minute. Okay, so it's really useful that it's only three seconds per stroke. So drive then a slow recovery. Drive, slow recovery. And trust me, I do see lots of people doing it the other way around where it's a really slow drive and then they race to the front for the next stroke. And there's a reason this stage of the stroke is called the recovery. Not only are you recovering to the, the front of the machine again, you're also giving your body a chance to recover after the power phase of the stroke. So it makes sense that you want the recovery to be the longest part. So that in like a 30 minute, 20 stroke a minute row, you're actually only working for 10 minutes. And when you think about it that way, oh, rowing's easy. <laughs> easy peasy. Okay, so four strokes time. We're gonna go back up to 24. We're almost done. Just a few more to go and we'll be finished. One more here. Okay, back to 24. So push harder with the legs, arms nice and straight as you push. Fingers hooked over the handle, okay? As much as you're not scared of it when it comes to the recovery, you're also not trying to choke it to death on the drive. So a nice loose grip, fingers hooked over the handle, and that helps not only the power get into the machine, but it helps you remain relaxed, okay? And being relaxed will save you a lot of energy as well. If you're really tense, you're just burning through energy that you don't need to be wasting. Okay, two more strokes. And then we're up to our final 28. Now, here we go, push faster, handle away into the front and then make sure don't hang around at either end, okay? So although I've already said don't hold the handle against you at the back, which hopefully you can see I'm not doing, or yeah, that's the right way to put it. <laughs> also, when you come into the front, you just want to Turn it around nice and quick. So let the kind of spring of your legs as you tighten up at the front help push you back out again. So you're in and push. I'm not holding the stroke. I'm connecting immediately. Keep your backside from scooting underneath you though. 
Hang on, right. back to 24. I'll explain that. When you come into the front, if you hold your, hang on, 24 John, not 20. <laughs> if you hold that position for too long, what happens is your backside wants to spring out from underneath you. So that's why you want to get into the front. You, it's like coiling up a spring, but then once you get into the front, you instantly release it. Okay? Because any time spent at the front, not only risks your backside escaping, but it's also time you're doing nothing. Okay, two more. And then we get one minute at 20 strokes a minute to recover after today's row. Now, in the majority of my rows, I put a cool down and stretching section on the end. But I'm not gonna do that on this one. But I do have separate videos for all of my warm ups and for the cool down. So I suggest if you're all done for the day, find that cool down video and go through it. Because it's really important to get used to doing a cool down. However, I'm also figuring a lot of you may be going off to do some weights or something next. So I'll leave it up to you whether to cool down now or later. But please do cool down and stretch. Last stroke here. And that's it. How quick was that? I don't think I've ever seen 20 minutes go quite that quickly before. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. Hopefully that slotted in nicely to whatever your plans were today for your exercise routine. Give you a little bit of a cardio hit. Good old row. Uh, and you'll... You can tell I'm out of breath, so hopefully you are too. Hopefully the heart rate was up, you're out of breath, you feel like you've had a good old session, and it means that you're set up for whatever you're gonna do next. You can, whether it's the next day or next today, who knows, you'll be able to work nice and hard, and hopefully had a little chance to think about your technique, okay? So, thank you so much for doing this lunchtime row. If you want to post about it on your socials with today's workout, then please just use hashtag lunchtime row okay thank you so much for joining me for today's workout until the next video take care be well bye bye